Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Mackay from Analog Wonderland and I am sat here with Andy Church from Kodak Alaris. Alaris, yeah. Moments. Kodak Moments, a division of Kodak Alaris. Perfect. Um, and for all intents and purposes, Kodak. Mm. <laughs> the wonderful people who um, uh, produce our film. So today we had booked this in uh, in order to go through the winners for the competition of the Portrait 800 pop art uh, competition that we ran. Um, but of course, this week's been very exciting. You announced Gold 120. Mm -hmm. We're filming this between the time of the announcement and when stock arrives. So depending on when we finish editing and put this up, um, you folk may have stock land already uh, or it might be on its way. But either way, what we're going to do is we're going to spend a bit of time talking about the wonders of Kodak, Gold 120, anything else going on, and then mm. we'll go through the competition. We have, well, hundreds of entries. Uh, we sent them all over to Andy, just mm -hmm. the images. <laughs> so he had only that to decide. Hundreds turned into 20. Yeah, down to 20 from plus 500. <laughs> down to 20. And? And then three winners yeah. within that, one of whom will be the grand winner. But you think there's a couple of others who are... Uh, Deserve a bit of film. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Some goodies yeah. as well. Wonderful. So that's what we'll do. So let's start. Um, sadly, we don't even have a pack of Kodak Gold 120 with us. <laughs> would have been lovely, wouldn't it? So, it would, yeah. This would be the moment to reveal. <laughs> um, pretend this is the back of it. Mm. No. We bought a Whisper Gold, actually, mm. the other day. And we did a, some filming with that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we thought that was close enough. Um, so, yeah, it took the... Well, it felt like it took the film world quite by surprise. Good. That was the plan. <laughs> Good. So, so that was very much a deliberate strategy. Mm. You must have been working on this for um, years, though. Not quite years, but I suppose you could call it years, more than one. So, it, it, yeah, it, it was, there was certainly a, a ground swelling or people asking for gold in 120 format. Um, I think I might have mentioned it before, but the whole process of manufacturing photographic film is very complex. And <laughs> it's come and up once or twice, yes. And you think just changing, <laughs> doing film on a different format is, is a very simple thing to do. But it, it, whenever you change anything on film, you find out it's not a simple thing to do. And um, you always have glitches and things. You, you do tests, you see what you've got, you check everything's OK, and then you have to make some adjustments. And that always takes time. But of course, we got there in the end and very pleased to um, yeah, to have a new film to offer to the market as of Monday this week. So, uh, yeah, grand news. March the 21st, 2022. Write it's, it in your the, diary. Uh, the, the return of gold, well, 200 in 120 format. It, it's a glorious return, but it, we were saying earlier, it's quite funny that there, um, I definitely spotted a split in people talking about it who said mm. uh, a brand new film and the return of a favourite, um, mm. I guess. So when, do you remember when it was discontinued, when it was last? I am I think it was mm, 30 years ago. Roughly. 30 years ago, Ooh, so there we go. Sorry. So that's enough for me to call it mm. definitely new and I'm guessing the chemistry would have changed as well. Um, that's fantastic. So you say there was this sort of groundswell of, of demand. We know every time we talk, um, we talk about you know the wish list from the community for Kodak. What made Gold One Twenty the one that made it to the top of the the, the list that mm. actually happened? Well, I, th I think it it's probably the one that ticks the most boxes. So, so Gold is a is a really nice film designed for the consumer market. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got. It's got good colour saturation, it's quite fine grain, it's got good sharpness, so it, it ticks. It's a very uh, good all-rounder film. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it already exists in 35mm format, so it's easier to get it to 120 format. But we can produce it at a slightly lower price, and mm. therefore it gives us the chance to give a, an entry-level film in, the one, in 120 format, which I think is just really good for the market, for anybody who wants to shoot film, really. In, in a mid format, maybe people that haven't tried mid format before, mm. it's a good start point. But it does have a unique look and feel. So it, it's not portrait, it's not ectar, hasn't got the really high color saturation ectar's got, or the real detail that you get with portrait at the different speeds. Um, it's 200 speeds, so it's not the fastest film, mm. but, it, it, but it, it ticks a lot of boxes and, and provides that good entry level for people who want to go into medium format. Yeah, I mean, the. Mm. Um, 
the weather mm. when it was announced. I don't know whether it's because of it. <laughs> yeah. It was all planned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, could I plan the weather? I would Not believe by me. that. I would believe that. But it was funny because mm. it, it sort of on the Monday, mm. the weather was glorious, at least where we are, um, and yeah. for a lot of the south of England, um, it just looked like gold weather, which mm. is just, mm. it's amazing. And then actually what I, I was really impressed because suddenly I then saw out of the woodwork all these photographers who clearly were part of that test adjust test yeah those people that knew in advance that knew and, that had you know, shot it yeah. that must have been sat on those images for ages suddenly mm. the sample images and we'll rotate through a few as we're talking mm. um were appearing and yeah they look amazing they look like gold mm. but yeah the detail um mm. and what people have been saying is it's just such a joy and that i definitely think the price point is such a big part of why mm. i'm excited and why loads of people are excited because uh yeah, you're right. Especially if you're, if you're starting off in medium format, they're cheap black and white, but for colour, you're looking mm. at what you start with Ektar. <laughs> that, that seems quite a quite a jump yeah. or portrait. Um, and so to to learn and to practice and to play with and and to have something like that is is just amazing. Mm. So yeah, I mean, until we get our hands on it, I, I I'm not sure how much more I can say because I'm, mm. I'm really excited. Um, I don't know which camera will be gifted with it first. Mm. I did this with Sinister when they, was it the BWXX? They sent me some and they said, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. you can have one for free if you uh, if you allow us to share the samples. And I put it in a, in a holder. <laughs> <laughs> and they did not use those sample photos. <laughs> Pinhole. <right? laughs> exactly, they were, I think, a little bit upset that I didn't use my Yashica. Mm. Um, but I definitely see it as that kind of film that's going to be uh, just an absolute boom. I didn't know you could be bought that easily, one roll of film. Oh, one roll of film. So oh, yeah, happily. No, I know. I yeah. have very low uh, mm. yeah, barrier <laughs> <laughs> for winning my favour. Um, the other thought then, I think, linked to that is, um, so that's why it definitely made it to the top, um, because it definitely fills a need and a lot of people mm. have wanted it. And as you say, the chemistry needed changing, but at least you've got some things in place. Mm. Um, is there the other reason I think it's exciting is also because it, it it's very clearly continued progress expansion products mm. this is this is something genuinely new mm. the inevitable next question <laughs> <Go on. laughs> I have to mm. um, does this mean that there's a pipeline of films that we can expect every six months every year is it not quite that Regimented, or is it more just like as things Do you come? Mean additional films, new films. Yes, please. Yes. So <laughs> you know I, what we're like. You've given us one film two days ago. <laughs> on to the next. So I, what I suggest is um, enjoy using gold <laughs> in 120 format, and, and don't worry about what's around the corner. Um, so there's nothing. I, I don't think there's anything more in the pipeline for now. Okay. So, but um, you, you never know, do you? So. Um, I think, it, and it's, it's like when the clamour when we had Ectochrome and Ectochrome mm. came back, which was four or five years ago now, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and it was as soon as it arrived, everyone's going, this is great, what's next? Oh, yeah, so, yeah. But, um, but I think just enjoy what we've got and, uh, and, uh, and we'll, think, we'll talk about other things at another time. Okay, mm. that's a very mindful answer. Yeah. Let us live in the present, mm. let us enjoy this moment. Mm. Great, great point. Um, I think it is, what is brilliant though is, is in fact, this week's been a bit crazy because then you saw Sinistil crowdfunding for mm. their 400D. Why would they do that? <laughs> <laughs> the same day. I mean, they must have woken up and been like, ah, oh, mm. well, we've committed now. We've got to do it. <laughs> but I'm sure twice in one day. But from a community side, it just meant that this week's just been um, incredible. Um, so that's really, really exciting. And hopefully in the next few days, um, stock will arrive, stock will get out, and we'll start yeah. to see loads of people. So, it. so yeah, well, I, I can tell you that there is gold 200 120 film in Europe, and <gasps> it is winging its way now to you know the the every dis main distributor throughout the region, and it will filter through to uh, end users in the next week or so. So uh, it's the wheels are turning and things are moving. A bit like watching Santa at Christmas when you see <laughs> see the sleigh going across. So well, it must have I, I felt must like get that. An app to, yeah. Uh, yeah, it must have felt like that. Yeah, exactly. Little, little where little boxes of gold going around. Because for you as well, it must have been difficult to to keep this under your hat then. Because um, also, mm. it was interesting to contrast it with Ectochrome, where Kodak had announced it a couple of years in advance. Mm. And I know it wasn't necessarily 
I think it was in a press conference. That it wasn't a, a public announcement. It wasn't an intended so. announcement, but um, <laughs> I can say that safely now. Okay, it, we're, <laughs> things have moved on, but yes. Oh, okay. Someone had a rush of blood and the announcement was made a long way ahead of where it was supposed to be. But Got it. So you le lesson so learned lesson from the learned, organization yeah, and yeah. you waited until you would... And it's tricky because you, you want to test it in the market. You want photographers to test it and to see that they like it. And you want to be able to, and that has to be, a film has to be processed somewhere. So I, I think I'm safe in telling you that it, it was dressed up as another film. So it kept incognito. Was it? So no chances. So if, um, oh, yeah, so it had Portra 160 yeah. back in paper on it. And so, <gasps> um, so that passed through a lab, you might have, might have oh. unwittingly processed it. The so, espionage. Yeah, so you have to do these things sometimes. Maybe we didn't have gold backing paper ready. Who knows? So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so I much prefer the idea. Time, but no, it was, yeah, so... Uh, I much prefer the idea of somebody of in a dark room mm. unspooling a perfect gold and re-spooning mm. it and hiding mm. it. Um, no, that's really, really exciting. Um, mm. and, and everything I've seen, again, I'm, I haven't shot it yet, is that <clears throat> the emulsion is really good. So, so does it sit... I'm guessing there's no reason why it wouldn't, but does it sit in the same place? So it's obviously cheaper than portrait ectar, so it's less saturated than ectar. So it's, yeah, ectar is designed to have a very high level of color saturation. So it's a, it delivers very bright colors and mm. it's a very sharp film. It's 100 speed, which gives it very fine grain. So, um, so it's not gonna match that, mm -hmm. but it, it does have a, a, a good level of color saturation for sure. And in its 200 speed, which again, which means it's fine grain, yeah. and it's good for detail. Um, but it won't have the same level of detail, particularly in the highlights and shadows that Portrait has, which is designed for more for weddings, studio, and portraiture, yeah. and, and everything else as well. They, yeah, they yeah. tick all the boxes now. They're a very good film. It's a, it's a very good, as I said, everyday film for anybody that wants to shoot either 35 millimeter and is now 120. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. and you'll definitely notice the step up from 35 million gold <coughs> to 120 just because of yeah. the larger size. And um, and I think potentially a, a lot of people might see this as the opportunity to try, hopefully, 120 for the first time in, yeah. an, in an affordable way. And it tends to have a very warm look to it, mm. which is a quite a pleasing look for a lot of people, particularly in the flesh tones. But just in general, it, 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 it does deliver nice colours. I think the balance tends to be very good on it. Perfect. Yeah. So that's brilliant. So it is in in Europe. Now, the other thing that we need to, I think, uh, talk about a little bit, because we always get asked about it, is the, the supply, fun and games mm. that you've, mm. I know you've been through, we've talked about it. Mm. If not daily, then near as, near as damn it. Um, first answer, is there going to be one batch of gold 120 and then it disappears for a bit, or have you got quite a lot in the cupboard? So, so there's uh, a handsome volume that's been delivered to Europe and there's there are follow on shipments. So uh, I'm not predicting any supply issues specifically touch wood, with touch gold wood, 120 <laughs> or, or any 120 film. Okay. But I, th I think it is fair to say that there's, there's post COVID and all the turmoil in the world, it's, there's lots of issues in, in producing anything now within manufacturing and lots of logistic issues, moving things once you produce them and getting the key components in. So without going over old ground, it's, there's plenty of challenges which causes problems in the supply chain. Uh, what, I would, what I would say is though that the, um, last year we sold more film last year than we did the year before, and our plan this year is to sell more film than we did last year. So we are trending in the right direction. Um, we don't have unlimited film. Market <laughs> demand is really strong, which is very good. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that we're gonna have a very good year. That's so, but touch wood and never say no. No, exactly. I mean, I think that's it because mm. I think we all, in January, it felt like a particular, <laughs> in Europe at least, I, I think it was true in America as well, just no colour 35 mil of any kind seemed to be mm. available and not, not just you, obviously. Mm. Um, and that definitely seems to be used for now. And if you're planning to sell more this year than last year, then there must be more in production. Is mm. So is, it's not a production or a logistics, is it? getting the right films in the right part of the world or is it sourcing the base bits in the first place? It's of everything really, I'd say. Everything. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's always challenges everywhere through the process. So, and it tends, because we're in Europe, we tend to have a monthly shipment, so it does come through in waves. Um, and, and I think when, you've, when the supply chain gets a little bit sort of empty of film and then it goes through very quickly and so you go 
you go from it's almost sine wave really yes <laughs> yeah everyone stocks up their film fridge mm. when they can and then shoots it and then mm. yeah okay amazing um that was all i was going to grill you on really mm. uh we did have some questions from instagram that we're gonna oh, okay that emma's gonna shout from behind the camera i think now hey, miles from expired film club asked if Kodak randomly have a warehouse full of expired film, can you please send it to him? <laughs> <laughs> a hint of greed there. Okay. Um, Is there much expired Kodak film? No, there's, I would say there isn't any. There, there may be something right back in manufacturing that was deemed unusable and in the back of a salt mine potentially somewhere. And because of COVID, I've not been in the office and sorted out my own supply, but that's, <laughs> that's not going to keep anybody happy for very long. So. Um, there is a quantity of film under my desk which might have expired, but um, <laughs> it keeps my feet at a good angle when I'm working. <laughs> so, um, um, sadly, there's no expired film. I think everything gets used very, or gets sold very quickly. How quickly mm. we use it is another matter, but um, it washes through very quickly now. Um, a lot of people just said thanks for bringing back Golden 120. Mm. Really Thank you. Project. Yeah, great. Um, any other announcements for the year? <laughs> <laughs> it's Mother's Day on Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. So I think we'll, we'll go with that. That's good. Mm. People are wanting to know about Colour Plus coming back. Mm. Yeah, so, so Colour Plus hasn't gone away. Um, it's not been perhaps a priority in production, particularly for the European North American market, but it does still get made every now and again. Um, there will be some coming to Europe in a few months' time, um, but but nowhere near as much as people would like to see. So <laughs> it, it hasn't gone, and it, it, it still exists. And in in when when the world gets to a better position in lots of ways, I think that it will be more prevalent again. That's perfect because that's reassuring. I think with the we're just so used to the community of when films aren't available for a few months suddenly mm. they're never and I think it's reassuring mm. to just hear it's still being made <laughs> yeah well uh, my portfolio is getting bigger not smaller so that's, that's true news. that yeah. is that is fantastic okay so that's enough uh grilling Andy thank you so much and I think we will finish mm -hmm. on the you know when we put out the social media questions apart from when are you bringing back Kodachrome Obviously, the, the number one question, well, the number one response was definitely a uh, appreciation, I think, for the work mm. that, that Kodak has done mm. um, in order to bring back something that's, that's so loved. Right then, let's get to well, what, we, <laughs> what we came here for, mm. um, which is the competition. So a quick reminder, so back in January, we ran our uh, twice yearly competition with Kodak Films. We picked Portrait 800. We did some fun things with Pop Art. Mm. Um, uh, to make it look lovely and we asked you guys to send us your favorite photos you've ever taken on Portrait 800 whether you shot it at the time or you've uh, the ones you've shot prior and as we said hundreds of entry have been whittled down to these 20 so what we'll do is we'll go through them we'll show you them on the screens as we go um, and uh, Andy will be seeing the details behind them for the first time we've got some <coughs> comments from the folks who had submitted them and we'll just I think spend some time immersed in Fantastic yeah. colour photography. Great images. And we start off with a doggy. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Ellis, yep. eyes and ears. What drew you in? Ah, right, okay. So we, we do tend to get quite a few canine um, entries. Um, but this one I just felt was um, just nailed it in terms of detail, uh, depth of field. So a, a handsome dog. Um, and yeah, so it's a, a very uh, well shot picture. Um, yeah, I just, I just, it, it sort of ticks all the boxes really for uh, you know, not masses of personality shining through, but but very good I think overall. Yeah, beautiful dog and eyes and ears mm. definitely draw you in. Yeah, yeah. Shallow Old depth blue of eyes. field. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Shallow depth of field. And the comment from Matthew is um, getting a puppy. Oh wow, a puppy to look directly at the lens was hard work but it paid off. Mm. Yes, I can imagine Matthew might have had a few frames either side of this one <laughs> without, but when he saw this, he must have been absolutely over the moon. Mm. Well done, Matthew. Thank you so much. You are one of our special mentions. The next one, very, very different. Um, John, John DeWurst and um, some incredible colours here. 
Yeah, it's really, I mean, I'm guessing this is end of day, not start of day, but some, some incredible colours, lots of dark, dark shadows, quite a, an unusual look and feel. Um, there's something that's very, obviously very dark about it, but it's good use of light with incorporating the shadows. Um, and I, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm doing a lot of canal walks recently, oh, yes. so I've it heard. kind of it resonated with me and my local experiences. But just love, love it as an image, um, um, purely because yeah, it's the colours and the shadows and the, the whole setting, really. So yeah, loved it. And clearly John took mm. the advice to uh, stretch the film's exposure latitude and take it into positions mm. that other films wouldn't be able to take great photos and delivered incredibly. Okay, and next up we have a familiar mm. face, a returning friend, Naz from Oxford, Nazir Hamid, and uh, a photo called Gorilla. <laughs> so I wonder why. Yep. Um, yeah, so complete cutie. I thought I recognised her, wasn't sure, but she just looked lovely. Um, it's a well-taken portrait um, in, a, in a very home environment, mm. um, but just, yeah, there's bucket loads of cuteness, really, and... Uh, and just looks, it's good in every way, yeah. Yeah, I wonder whether she was doing this expression and he just had his camera nearby and took it or whether he asked her to <laughs> pose with a gorilla. I'm not sure, but it's, it's beautiful. So Naz says that, um, loves how the colors pop and how the expression on his daughter's face somehow echo the expression on the gorilla hot water bottle cover. Mm. About Portrait 800, it's an excellent film to use mm. indoors during the day. Um, don't think of it as a film just for night photography. Mm, yeah, wise words. Don't do that, Andy. Yes, never <laughs> have. <laughs> Good. <laughs> On to Matthew Ellis with uh, a street photo. And what did you enjoy here? So it's a very busy photo and it, it, it's got what I would call urban. So it, it's, um, it's yeah, straight from the street. And these do look like bad boy pigeons. So they, um, and they're not easy to see. They're almost camouflaged. Mm. They're incognito. They're hiding in open sight. Um, and I just like the way that they are um, spread around. And they also, they must be cold day. They all look slightly puffed up. But look, they've got a sort of menacing dark look about them. And um, and they, the sort of the rest of the gang are littered around. But it, it's obviously their neighbourhood. They own it. But, <laughs> but, but in general. <laughs> In general, I just I think the colours are really good. Mm. It's having having the, with the graffiti and that, and it gives it that sort of certain look and feel. And I think the more sp more time you spend looking at the image, the more you see. And well, so, the more pigeons so, I see. I hadn't even noticed pigeons. the ones in the background. Yeah. The more <laughs> so there's there's things there to be discovered. Yes. So it's got a nice depth to it. And um, lovely photo, Matthew. Thank you so much. Um, and a wow, wonderful <coughs> photo of uh, the Colosseum. So presumably. Lots of people have taken photos of the Colosseum before. I haven't seen this angle before, but Georgina Postlethwaite has absolutely nailed it. Has found a new angle um, through a, the um, the tool of a puddle. So uh, yeah, but no, well done, Georgina. Um, it, it just looks great. It's, and um, I did show this one to my daughter, who's getting into photography, and she really liked this one as, ah. in particular. So, um, but yeah, it's so you, you lose a little bit of colour when you shoot in this stuff. You shoot through on the reflect a reflection of a water, but it kind of looks really nice. It's kind of giving mm. another sort of depth, really. So, and and the, the you know the thought process, the presence of mind to to discover your surroundings and, and find a new angle for a, uh, an old subject, a very old subject. Very old subject. Yeah, yeah. and I like the um, on the right side in particular where you have the really bright pot that I don't know if that's the sun or a light, and then going up there's sort of the fading, it almost looks like um, it's burning away mm. uh, a little bit to reveal the Colosseum. Mm. Um, I think it's a really, really striking image. So congratulations, Georgina. More reflections mm. from Bethany Parsons this time. Reflections mm. One is the title, so I'm assuming this is part of a series, um, but this photo made it in. Bethany said, I love the contrast of the rich orange with the pale blue and the hint of movement in the reflection. Um, is that what uh, stood out for you? Yeah, I, I must say I agree. So I, again, <laughs> I, I, like the I like the clarity of the reflection, uh, the slight haze, which is exactly as uh, Bethany said, and uh, the, the colours. And, and so whilst the, the palette of colours from the sky is quite narrow, but there's still lots mm. within it, and it, it's reflected perfectly in the water. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's good, yeah, I it's suspect good a, a mm. less um, a less professional film mm. or a less developed film. 
that's the right word, mm. um, wouldn't have captured quite the nuance of the clouds and the sky. Mm. Um, and medium format, I'm assuming, unless it was cropped, um, mm. which will have helped capture all the details. That, uh, yeah, and it's, it's, there's not a huge amount of light in there. And to capture mm. the detail in the shadows, is, again, is a portrait 100 traits, isn't it? Yes. Wonderful work. Underwater. I don't think <coughs> we've had an underwater photo before in uh, the competitions. I yeah. love it. I'm immediately interested in the camera. Um, uh, a Nikonos. Mm. There we go. Great. So um, this is Orkye. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Castellin. Castellin. <laughs> oh, Hopefully you got that right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I should have looked that up. Um, the underwater tree. And uh, their advice is that Portrait 100 is great for shooting underwater <coughs> as it captures the colours because because underwater you have less light mm. and you get colour distortion mm. um, and it can easily desaturate. So I hadn't thought about it before, but mm. yeah, that makes total sense to me that Portrait 100 is a natural. Yeah, and, and that's kind of why I chose it um, because it is so challenging photographing underwater. Every metre you go, you lose, a, a, I forget the proportion now, a huge significant proportion in light. Um, and it ten, tends to go cyan, you tend to lose focus, it goes, it goes blurred. Um, you lose the clarity, but this, this must have been a, um, somewhere that there was very good light um, and not too deep, but still got the bottom so that you can see you know, the, the, the base of the, the underwater. Um, and it is, it's difficult to do, and, um, and it, but it's been achieved really well. And I guess Portrait 100 has really helped in that regard. So it's, it's another application for a high speed film, really. So especially when you've got fishes that are moving around. Exactly. So, yeah. so we need, well, we need an Analog Wonderland uh, team meeting that we're going to go scuba mm. diving with <laughs> waterproof <laughs> cameras and portrait 800. Um, and I've just looked it up and I believe the pronunciation is uh, Oki. So thank you so much, Oki, for this photo and huge apologies uh, for your mangling <coughs> your name earlier. Wonderful, wonderful photo. Ah, we have another, another Colosseum shot. Georgina Postlethwaite. Um, ah, right, okay. The same day, later in the day, before yeah. after dinner, who knows? Mm. But she made it back and has made it again into the top 20, mm. which out of hundreds of photos is a wonderful sign. Um, so you obviously didn't have any details of who'd taken these photos. Did you suspect oh. Georgina was responsible I, for both? Or did you think this was going to be a Colosseum off? I don't even think the, the photos were that close together on the database. So <laughs> I, and I did recognise it was a Colosseum, and, but I just thought it had to go in because uh, the, the nighttime detail. So mm. uh, taking any, any image at night when there's less light around becomes more challenging. And to capture the, the, the strength of the image and, and all the detail that you can see it um, is just really good. So I, I couldn't not include it. Brilliant. Well done, Georgina. Huge congratulations. Mm. Oh <clears> my <throat> gosh, this photo is incredible. So I saw this, I think relatively early on, we put it on mm. Instagram and one of the most uh, engaged with photos um, so Ray Rapkirk, the title is Live as Frida, um, obviously Frida Kahlo, and um, this is just unreal. And then you read the story, and I think mm. you'd then seen it afterwards, and it just becomes incredible. This looks like a planned studio shoot, mm. um, and actually I think you were saying it was a bit more... It was, uh, I think it was a chance um, coming across some flowers in Covent Garden, and the model called Liv... Um, dressed as Frida Cahill. Presumably that wasn't um, chance. That, actually, that wasn't chance. <laughs> she didn't accidentally so, dress as Frida Cahill. So they Kahlo. knew what they were doing at the start of the day, but I think finding the backdrop in Covent Garden really made the picture what it is. Um, or, or completed the picture, I should say. Um, yeah, so they've come up with a really striking image, great colours, very distinctive, and in and sort of somewhat given homage to uh, Frida Cahill. Uh, and, and the lighting as well, so... I assumed studio because the lighting is so crisp, so direct, mm. um, and so well balanced on the face. But to do that in the sunlight against the backdrop that you found um, is incredibly skillful. So huge congratulations, mm. Ray. Um, yeah. This would have been in my top three, I think. But as we know, Andy's, uh, Andy's the boss, so um, he got to pick it. But that was absolutely brilliant. <coughs> A double exposure. Yeah, there has to be one. Well, generally there's one, isn't there? There is always but one. A refle always reflections one. and double exposure, the, yeah. uh, the Achilles heel, <laughs> the weakness <laughs> of the judge. 
Yes. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a double exposure. Um, what to say? Um, so very clearly a statue and then some flowers, but come together um, in a in a yeah striking but unusual way as well. I think so. Re yes, liked it. Yeah. One of the tricks with double exposure is to make sure that any silhouette is an interesting silhouette. Mm. And I think to have this with the horse with the wings and then the individual legs coming off, it looks even more fantastical in silhouette than it probably does as a statue. Um, with then the flowers giving it the texture are absolutely, absolutely stunning. Mm. On to Tom, Tom Trevithan, and uh, clearly taking on, again, embracing the low light opportunities with Portrait 800. This is in the Barbican. Yes, which I didn't know. Um, until now. And Tom says he loves the contrasting colours and the different levels of leading lines that go through this photograph. Um, were you drawn in by the leading lines? So I think at first sight it, it could be a basic image, mm -hmm. but then the more you look, the more you see, you see the colours, the different light levels and the leading lines as well. And I think it's made by the individual leaning mm. against the wall, so it just gives it that extra bit you know, position nicely between two wall lights, leaning against the, probably a windowsill or an alcove. Um, and capturing that type of image is, is a real feat, really, when there's not a lot of life around, there's different colours, there's obviously not, no daylight involved. Um, and yeah, it's been done really well, I think. I find it, um, I find it quite an unsettling image in a, in a really good way. I think it's really interesting because you have this really, you, clearly Tom, found and picked the point in the middle of the hall. So, you know, the blue runs straight down the middle. But then apart from that, it's, it's quite imbalanced. So you think almost the first glance, mm -hmm. the light's the same, but it's not. Then there's a man on one side and not on the other. And actually opposite the man who's well lit is just this dark area of the photo. Um, so I'm almost, it's, I say on settings, I'm almost looking then expecting symmetry and not finding it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I find this really, really captivating. And um, I think if, he, if he'd have been stood anywhere else, he wouldn't have looked the same. He wouldn't have had the no. same feel about it. So, no, 100% yeah. not. Yeah. And, and there was clearly interesting things to take. So to choose this one, really well done, Tom. I, I, I absolutely love it. Mm. And uh, another, uh, well, a really interesting and different portrait, um, Andy Robinson, behind the scenes. Um, what stood out for you here? There were lots of portraits. There were lots of people photos, but yeah, this one clearly the, was... And it. there was a good selection of portraits and all different styles as well. But I just really like this one. I, I love the, 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 the centre point colour of the dress and um, the singer. Um, but then the silhouette with particularly the camera, um, giving it that sort of theatre look mm. um, or, or yeah, so TV studio look or theatre camera look. Uh, and the spotlight, which is the centre mm. part, which which takes the eye to the singer as well, and she just looks fantastic. So, really good. And she's, you know, she's obviously performing. You know, you can tell by the hands and her body posture mm. and everything else. So, um, and again, it's dark. There's no natural light. It's, it's most likely tungsten light, mm. and it's just the whole thing has come out really well. And actually, Andy does say um, warm tungsten lighting looks amazing on Portrait Hundred. So. Mm. Absolutely, um, a very different look from Sinister 800, mm. which is probably what a lot of people may think of with tungsten. This looks very natural. And yeah, you're right, it's a, it's a brilliant example of a photo mm. telling a story. Mm. Um, and you could easily go in with a close-up of this situation and just have the singer's amazing face and hair and the dress. Um, but to <coughs> choose to pull it to this point, but no more. Is this a music video? Is this a TV show? Like, what's the context? Mm. Um, There's so much that can go wrong when you take a shot like that because of the environment you're in, the, the low level of light. Metering the light is so so difficult, and mm. um, it, I think he's nailed it. Well done, Andy. Well, maybe he did. Yeah. Put, he put the flash on and it ruined the entire music video. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, start again. Charlie Rockberg and Feast. Maybe a sprinkling of seagulls as well. Oh, yeah, we, we down oh. with the seagulls. <laughs> Um, yeah, so character, happiness, liveliness, um, fast moving birds captured um, in the moment, sharp, crisp, look, they could almost be suspended, it almost looks like they're in a flying position, but mm. there's, no, there's no blur, there or very little blur, so high speed film in, it, in its um, unique environment, doing a really good job, I think. 
And this is, of um, course, the, the other way of thinking about a fast film, is it's not mm. just you can take it into low light and get images. You can also have it in normal light, but for much faster shutter speeds. Mm. Um, and so you can, you can freeze this motion. Whereas if you had a ISO 100 or 200 with this scene, mm. you could probably still capture the man and the ones on his hand, mm. but you wouldn't have got that incredible shape in the top left of the bird, mm. bird mid-flight. Um, so Charlie says, uh, loves the joy in the subject's face, framed by the frantic and chaotic energy of the birds. It gives a fun insight into their relationship. He got the impression that this man regularly comes down to the south bank and feeds the birds. Portrait 100 always looks amazing under tungsten streetlights or twilight, but he was really pleasantly surprised by how it looked in daylight. Very useful, <laughs> especially in the UK. Little comments about the weather, I think that's understandable. Yeah, yeah. Midnight Rainbow by Jonathan Mock. Wow. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So I'm guessing Northern Lights, yep. um, Aurora, yeah. And um, so capturing that, capturing the colour, that's kind of the easy bit to a degree. But capturing the shadows and the detail in the in the bottom third of the image mm. really just sort of really takes it to another level. Um, you you can get if you're really lucky some amazing perf you know uh, performances from the Aurora. Um, and just, yeah, so a special moment captured, um, but, but filled in a whole scene. And to have mm. even the, the mountain range in the background, which is, is, is um, nicely, uh, yeah, pretty, yeah, it's just a yeah, good, great part of the image, really. So it's incredible. It's, it's, held, held every, it's held the shadows and then right into the highlights, the bright light of the sky as well. Um, just looks, looks really good. So I know, I know. Obviously, one of the benefits of portrait is the exposure latitude. Mm. But even still, I think so easily this could have gone either way. I'd have loved, I'd love to know. Maybe we'll ping Jonathan Atters. I'd love to know a bit of how mm. he did meet it and how he did expect. Did he bracket shoot high and low, and mm. this is the one in the middle, or um, because the skill to pick and to have the confidence. Mm. Like if you see Northern Lights, mm. <laughs> the the temptation to just go safe, I think, would be really easy. Mm. And this is. But to, get the, to get the exposure right, with, with very little grain, which shows he's got the right amount of light on the film as well, it's just really good, yeah. Highly, highly skilled, beautifully composed, and honestly, stunning. Mm -hmm. Huge congratulations. Oh, I really enjoyed, um, I really enjoyed this next photo. Mm. Um, what did you like? Oh, just the, I think the brightness, the sharpness, um, and the fact that the a reflection on the water just mm. merges into the background. Um, so, and the, the depth of field just lasts for so long, so you get really good detail all the way through. Taken from a dark inside environment, um, silhouetting through the roof as well, which is really good. Um, yeah, so just, yeah, a good, a good image for me. Yeah, the, the colours and the shapes mm. that match the reflection of the mountains and the walls. Mm. And yes, yeah, so many other films wouldn't have been able to pick up that detail on the inside, which would have made too much of it, I think, dark. Um, on what was clearly a very bright day as well, so the mm. contrast is in its light, coat with is, yeah. is really strong. Makes for a really striking image. Um, so quite unusual, I think, but um, a lovely, lovely photo. Mm. Nighttime sky. I, I, I wondered whether anyone would be brave enough to do astronomy photography with Portrait 800. And, um, and uh, Pateri Nini, has absolutely nailed it without any star trails as well, which is interesting. So it must have been a relatively fast shutter speed. Mm. Were there a few astronomy photos that you picked through? Was this the only one? Or? No, there were a few. I was there actually few. going to mention that, and but and it was a close run. But I picked this one as being just that little bit more standout, and and the, there was a, a very very close second. But this is the one that made it through. <laughs> made it into uh, the top twenty. Made it into the top twenty. And, and I think why, because the, oh, it's, the images I can see is now called Two Pines, so there's two pine trees, which give it a, 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 a central subject to the photo. And the halo of light around the trees, I think does, you know, really um, brings them to the fore. Um, and then the whole nighttime sky and the, the baseline of trees at the bottom as well. So there must have been a lot of smaller trees ready to um, you know, emerge. Um, but yeah, all in all, brings a really nice image. It's really stunning. Mm. And I think this is one of those photos that if you're used to digital and how well iPhones can see in the dark mm. these days, the skill to compose mm. with uh, just an analog is, is incredible. Because of course, in the situation, 
it'll have been almost pitch black. And actually, they do say um, it was very dark and half luck that I got the trees just right. <laughs> yeah, can't see the well, trees. Exactly, though, yeah. you wouldn't be able to. Um, so it must have been a longer exposure. And, yeah. Absolutely, but but it's one of the real yeah. tricks of nighttime <laughs> photography when it's this dark is to understand what you're seeing before. I know a lot of people who mm. compose in the daylight and then come back and try and fit it, but clearly that didn't happen here. And then they say about Portra, be courageous and don't hesitate trying out what the emulsion is capable of. Go to the dark. Mm. Oh, excellent. Well, if I get photos like this every time, I'll do it like a shot. I'm not sure I would, but it's worth a try. <clears throat> uh, okay, and we move on to um, Gabriella Rec and a more traditional portrait, dare I say, um, of Martina, but a really really striking one. So what did you enjoy here from, again, presumably quite a few portraits that, that were entered? Yeah, so we're getting very near the top now. Um, and this, at first glance, is a very sort of uh, simple portrait, but I, I think anyone, and most of us will have, have had a passport photo at some point, and a simple photograph of an individual with a plain background very rarely lo comes out looking really good, <laughs> does it? Um, but, but this oh no, I am equally <laughs> glamorous in my passport, don't get me wrong. I wish I was. <laughs> um, so, and then every, everything's just come out just just, just spot on, really. Mm. So um, th there's really good detail, uh, flesh tone's very good, perfect really in every way. I think the lighting's really good, there's no real hot spots or anything. Um, and it's just a very clear, clean image. Um, yeah, natural beauty, I would say. Definitely, and I think so. this is, um, and then I can see as well, it was shot with ambient light. Um, mm. So really the most simple, you know, the, the clothing is simple, the background is simple. Um, there's no props or anything in the photo apart from this mm. lady. I think if I was, you know, this almost feels like um, if, you were to, if you had one photo to show someone about portrait, this, this kind of feels like it would be one of those. And that's not to say it's easy because as you say, mm. a lot of people try and take photos with simplicity and don't mm. get such a strong result. I mean, I think part of it is the expression, the tilt of the head, mm. but technically this is uh, absolutely, absolutely perfect. S slightly more lit on one side compared to the other, but, but no real strong shadows, very clear. No, enough to give a little bit of a shape yeah. really, isn't it? A bit of a mm. depth. Wonderful. So now we move to the winners, the top three mm. photos, and um, congratulations to everyone from here on in. You will be getting some uh, Kodak, Kodak goodies in the post very soon. We start with Daniel Kane and a very brave decision to shoot directly into the sun mm. when the sun is very low. Yes, and I, yeah, so end of day, um, shooting into the sun, um, but perfect use of the sun really. Um, I don't know if that was someone posing or that was just someone looking over a railing or whatever, um, but it, it works really well. It's, it's, it's created that, that ready brick moment. How many mm. people are gonna know what that means? So, um, so yeah, there's a, there's a warm glow around the centerpiece, the person in right in the middle, and then the, the darkness and silhouette of the landscape or the skyline, uh, and then the unusual nighttime colors as the sun sort of drops behind uh, the horizon. So, yeah. Um, and, if, and if you're thinking about, or if, you, or if you think this might be easy to get someone in this exact position, you can actually see there's somebody else to the right mm. who blurs totally into the background because without the sun framing the shape, you just entirely lose them. So it would be very easy, I think, to get this wrong and, and have a, an, an unremarkable photo, but instead you have something that's really, really quite striking. And it's one of those ones you really are never sure what you got until, it, <laughs> yes. until it, that film has been so This processed. is Daniel, yeah. da Daniel Kane watching the sunset, and Daniel does say, it was the last frame on the roll. I'm glad I managed to catch wow. this before yeah. I run out. <laughs> so yes, in <laughs> yeah. another world, yes. Daniel took another photo two hours before and didn't get this image. I'm glad we live in this one. Ah, here we go. Mm. And another chance for me to uh, get the name right this time. Oki Kasselin wow. with Sunrise in the Woods. Congratulations, Oki, for the second photo. You were underwater before. You've now emerged, mm. but into, into, you, the woods. into the woods. You had an underwater mm. tree. Now you have above water tree. Um, another one straight into the sun and another absolutely incredible photo. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, trees in the woods, but it's shot into the sun, the level of detail, the rays of the light, the colours. Um, so when you go into the woods, you lose a lot of light. And so the, all the lighting changes again. So that's a, no, a new challenge to be in a new environment. Um, autumn colours. Um, uh, but yeah, just just 
put together really well. And the braveness and boldness of shooting directly at the sun and still having sharpness in the image. Mm. Usually if you shoot into a bright light, you anything that's within a shadow area loses focus, um, but it's held up really well. So uh, uh, yeah, very good. Yeah, if you look at the the ground, you can really see the, the difference in the the exposure that those leaves are getting, but everything has got lovely colour, everything mm. has decent definition. And the trees as well, they're that lovely period where you've got the strong shapes, but enough leaves that it's fascinating. So clearly an autumnal view, um, sunrise as well, rather than, than sunset, which we've seen a few things before. Absolutely gorgeous. So the grand prize winner. So those were all 19 incredible photos. There has to be a winner, and it is Mark Freegard with Cheeky Chappy. <laughs> ah, yeah. So I can see yeah. That's a well named photo. Um, so Ooze's personality, not often you take a picture that's that close to someone, whether it was taken close up or cropped afterwards. Um, but how much charisma, character, yeah, how much personality can shine through? Um, so someone looking, yeah, slightly unkept in some ways, but, but totally comfortable and, and just sparkling, really. So, uh, I mean, and, and everything's done really well, yeah. Brilliant, like the, the, the focus, the, the eye, the expression, mm. and it does have a great story behind it. So um, mm. Mark writes uh, a bit of detail. Um, this was shot in our back garden during lockdown. Wow. We were socially distanced, Andy, who is this chap here, mm. uh, no relation, nope. um, <laughs> has a habit of turning up at our garden gate unannounced and we would entertain him at a distance. Uh, this was very soon after I started using a 1976 Nikon F2 with a waist level viewfinder attached. I was very interested to see how looking down at the viewfinder might work and how well I could find focus. I was inspired to try this after watching the brilliant documentary Finding Vivian Mayer, during which someone points out many of her photographs were taken while she was looking down rather than through. So, watched the documentary, was inspired mm. to try something different with a Nikon F2. And this was the result. So the good news, Mark, is you've clearly <laughs> nailed the exposure. This is a photo that anyone would be incredibly proud of. Um, and I think it's a very, very worthy. Yeah, it's really nice to hear the story behind it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, well done, Andy. And well done, Mark. Yeah, really good. Well, thank you so much, Andy. Thank you. Um, Yes, hundreds of photos you've enjoyed, looked through. Yeah, yeah, it's been a real treat Crawled again. through, yeah. as always. Um, we've seen a real variety uh, mm. of photographers, of styles, and of what they've done. Was there anything in there that you thought was a surprising approach to Portrait 800, or do you actually feel that from a, from a <coughs> marketing point of view, that's been a brilliant run through of what this film can do? Yeah, I, I think we most boxes were ticked. I think you've got maybe a bit more high speed, but we had the pigeons, the, the low lighting, the portrait nature. I saw very little grain, which mm. is really good, which means the photography has been done perfectly. Um, yeah, I, it's, and some really good colours all the way through as well. So it, it, there were loads of other images that could easily have been in the top 10 on another day. Mm. You, can only, you can't pick them all, you have to, you have to narrow it down. I struggled to get to 20. We, <laughs> we always start by thinking, pick the top 10. And yeah, exactly. We'll have one winner and five to 10. And someone pushes the boundaries. And there's three so. winners and 20 <laughs> mentions. No, yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, so I, we, well, I really appreciate sh you shooting on portrait and, and submitting the photos. Uh, so massive thank you from me. Um, s sorry you didn't all win, but, um, <laughs> but the competition was really strong. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Well, we will show We'll share as many of, of these on mm. our social media as we can over the next couple of weeks. Mm. Um, the top three will get emails from either myself or Andy shortly, confirming shipping address um, for a little goodie bag to arrive. Um, and thank you everyone who, who got involved at the time and then uh, waiting patiently for these results to be announced. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. As always, I love it when you see the folder of all the images and you can sort of scroll through and just get a sense of the color palette of a film. Because mm. versus gold, which we did before, which was quite bright, quite vivid, there was a bit more pastely muted, but as soon as you zoom in, the, mm. the detail is, is just unreal. Mm. I think the tendency for people to use portrait when in the light is getting low changes the colours that they mm. capture, but that you don't necessarily have to use portrait in that environment. So it, you can really use it any time, um, day or night. 
<laughs> as you have seen. There we go. Yeah. Wonderful note to end on. Andy, thank you as always. Thank you. And we will see you again for the next one. Look forward Thank to you. It. Cheers.